Okay, what's going on, True Fam and YouTubers everywhere? Welcome back to the channel. Today, guys, we're going to be taking a look at OBS. We're going to take a look at the beginner settings for OBS and uh, what you guys need to do or understand to get your stream started using open broadcasting software. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, guys, so I have my setup here already. Of course, I stream every single day, but the settings that you're going to see, I'm going to go through and change them. I'm not going to apply them, but I am going to go through and kind of in depth on what I started with and what you guys should be looking to change for your streams. If you have older hardware, if your internet connection is anywhere from like three to five megabits per second, you don't have like the biggest upload speed, but you have enough to stream. Well, disclosure, if you guys have anything less than three megabits per second, I do not recommend using these settings and I do not recommend streaming with anything less than three megabits per second because your stream's not just not gonna look great, your hardware's gonna struggle, your internet's gonna struggle, and it's just not gonna be a very pleasing time for you. Um, if you do have anything less than three megabits per second, I would recommend trying it off of a console first. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into the settings here. We're gonna hit the settings tab right in the bottom corner here. And what we are greeted with is all of this fun stuff. So starting with the general tab, kind of keep this as default. You can change the theme to dark. I would recommend doing so, so you don't kill your eyes. If you wanna blind yourself, I mean, you could do default, but that doesn't look very nice. So let's gonna keep that at dark. I'm gonna tell you guys this right now. Always hit the apply button after you switch something. I'll say it again, always. See this button right here? See this button right here? You change something, you hit apply, okay? Because if you don't save your settings, you're gonna be kicking yourself in the butt. OBS is really nice now. And they will ask you, if you accidentally hit the X button and you didn't hit apply, it'll be like, hey, do you wanna change, save your settings? It didn't do that back in the day, so you guys are spoiled, okay? I'm just letting y'all know. So. Change it to dark, hit apply. Moving on to stream tab. This tab is going to be for your stream key and things of that sort. So follow the directions on your respective streaming service. Find your stream key, you input that key right here. I'm not gonna show you guys what it is because that's my wife's stream key for Mixer and you can stream to her channel on Mixer if I show you the stream key. So we're not gonna do that, but you're going to do streaming services. You're gonna find your service here so mine is usually Twitch. Um, you can do YouTube gaming, Smashcast. I don't even know what that is. Mixer, that's a popular one. Daily Motion, Facebook Live, Restream, LiveEDU.TV, Twitter and Periscope, that's new. Um, all sorts of different streaming services there are permitted. And then you can also hit show all services and there's like thousands. So I don't really do that because I don't need all of those streaming services. The only one I care about is Twitch. You go to your server, I usually keep it on auto because it finds the best server for you. You guys can fine tune it a little bit more if you want to. So if you know a city that's closest to you and you think you're gonna have the best connection to it, uh, you can find it here. And then of course you put your stream key in the bottom little bar here. Okay, so moving on to output tab. Output tab, I usually, it's gonna say simple. So it's usually gonna say simple here. Let's go to simple. I always change this to advanced because there are properties here that you can change to fine tune your stream and make it better. And I figure I'm teaching you guys this anyways, so why not go ahead and utilize that? I don't really ever play with the recording audio replay buffer when I first started. Um, so we're just gonna focus on the streaming tab for now. Keep your audio track on one. You're gonna keep your encoder to X264. And the reason why you do that is because X264 is a more reliable encoder it uses the processing of your cpu not your gpu you can change this to nvenc h264 that is another good preset if you have amd cards it's going to be something a tad different um, but i always stick to x264 because it's the most reliable in my opinion uh, and you're not taking up your graphics cards processing power especially if you're doing pc games you don't want that in NVE and C encoder because it's gonna eat up your frame rates on your game and your stream's gonna look laggy and it's not gonna be a fun time. So keep it on X264 for now. Okay, so 
always check mark this right here for enforced streaming service encoder settings and that's just that's just a little thing that i do because it keeps everything running nice and smooth for you you're going to want to rescale your output if you don't do this your output will not be rescaled and you will try to be streaming at 1080p which is going to kill you guys that have older hardware or if you have that five three to five megabits per second um, upload speed so always click rescale output I put mine to 7, 720p and it's just easy it makes it easier for your viewers on mobile on with bad internet connections and things of that sort to view you so do 720p for now heed my warning and do it your rate control your rate control should always be cbr that is recommended by facebook twitter twitch no matter what streaming service you go to cbr is recommended by them your bit rate for those of you with three to five megabits per second you're going to want to stay anywhere from 2500 to 3000 so if you have five upload speed you can kind of go up to 4000 if you want to if you have five but that's getting a little wonky because if you're some cable providers they will throttle you so be careful of that so let's go 2500 for now that's generally pretty good for a 720p at 30 frames per second which is what we're shooting for here so change those two. Um, I do use custom buffer rate, so that's that little bar right here. Make sure you click that for the buffer size. I keep that at 2500. These two should always match. Your keyframe interval. So I know for Twitch, it's two. Mixer is usually one or two. I think you can switch between the two. And Facebook Live is always one. I don't know what Twitter and Periscope use. I don't know many people that stream to those, so I wouldn't know. I don't know what YouTube gaming is either, but this is for Twitch. So keyframe interval, your respective streaming platform will tell you what the keyframe interval should be. CPU uh, usage preset. I keep this at faster because I'm on an eight core processor with 16 threads. Um, I can do fast as well and medium depending on if I'm doing like a console game or a well optimized PC game, but I keep mine on faster just to keep everything generalized. For those of you with older hardware, since say like I, when I started out, I had an i5 4690K. I was always on ultra fast because it couldn't do anything else. I would eat up like 50% of my processing power and it would make my stream lag. So to get away from that stream lag and make it look pleasing for your end user, use ultra fast. For those of you that have older i7s or you're just doing a single PC stream platform, even with a 6700K, you're gonna wanna use super fast or very fast. But for now, we're targeting those guys with older hardware, with older AMD systems or older Intel systems. So use ultra fast. Your profile should always be main. Uh, and this is recommended by any of your streaming platforms. I've seen it on Facebook. I've seen it on Twitter. I've seen it on Twitch. So profile is going to be main. Your tune, you don't really have to change that. And X264 options, you don't have to change either. Let's go ahead and move on to the audio tab. Actually, no, let's save the audio tab for a little bit later. I want to get back in. I want to get into the audio tab because I want to show you guys something that will definitely help you guys out. So let's go to video tab. Let's skip audio for now. Okay, so this is where you kind of fine tune that downscale thing that I, we talked about earlier. So your base canvas is usually always going to be a 1920 by 1080. And the reason why you put it at 1920 by 1080 is the games we stream or the content we stream is usually at 1080p. So keep that there. Now your output scaled resolution. This is going to be what you downscale to. This needs to match what we put in the out output tab right here. So going back to the video tab, at 1280 by 720, make sure these two match. Make sure the output tab matches where it says rescale, the video tab where it says output scaled, and then your downscale filter. I use by cubic. For those of you guys with older hardware, you might want to use by linear because it's a little bit easier on your processor. But by cubic is the most balanced between Lanxos and by linear. I mean, I've been using by cubic since I had my i5 and I've never had an issue. You can try the different ones just to see, but I do recommend by cubic because it is a very balanced preset or filter, I should say. Now, common FPS values. I use 60 FPS because I have a higher end system. I mean, my system specs are as follows. I have a Ryzen 7 1700 clocked at four gigahertz. It's on water. I have 16 gigs of RAM and I have an EVGA GeForce 1080. I have pretty high end system, so I'm able to do 60 frames per second. I also have the upload speed to do so. If you guys have a lower upload speed though, 
stick to 30 fps it doesn't look as good as 60 frames per second but you can't get there if you're hardware limited or if you're internet limited so stick to 30 frames per second your viewers are still going to be happy with it just because they get to come hang out with you it's not that big of a deal so keep that at 30. now i'm going to skip hotkeys for now because if you have a stream deck you don't really need the hotkeys and they're not as they're just not as useful as they used to be since we have all of these new gear coming out and i'm actually going to be doing a review of the stream deck and going in depth with what it can do so we'll get into the hotkeys and the differences between that and a stream deck later so let's go ahead and move on to the advanced tab here, don't really have to touch anything. I keep this all at default. I've never once gone to this tab and had to change anything. Um, your direct 3D, it, I mean, OBS usually, the guys at OBS, they know what needs to happen here on this tab. So you can fine tune this, you can uh, find different things on um, online to fine tune here. But I never touch it because I don't need to. I generally just worry about the video, the audio, output, stream, and general tabs. Keep that, keep that somewhat generalized and don't touch it. Now, before you exit out of all of this stuff, hit that button right there. Always hit apply. If you guys change any sort of settings and you mean to change the setting in the settings tab, hit apply. Now, the cool thing about OBS now that we didn't have a couple years ago is if I hit this X button, it's going to flash up confirm changes. You have unsaved changes, do you save changes, question mark. I'm not going to because I don't want to save these changes because I've already fine tuned all of my stuff, but you're going to want to hit yes. So I'm going to hit no, but you're going to want to hit yes. I'll say it again, hit yes, but I'm going to hit no. So no, I don't want to change anything. We skipped the audio tab for a reason and I'm going to show you why. We're going to go over here to settings and I'm going to show you that the audio tab, when you first come into it, is going to have all of these at default. I disabled them for one reason. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put my mic on default for a second. We're just gonna apply that. If I move over to my starting soon screen, you see how my microphone is still enabled? Or if I go to my countdown screen, now this plays audio, by the way, this plays audio. So it's, it's playing its audio, and I'm, I'm not supposed to be on stream right now, but they can hear me talking. I don't want that to happen. So let's go ahead and move back over to my just camera. See, and now I have two microphones. Why is that? So I have two microphones because if I go into properties, you can actually set the device that your microphone is talking out of. You don't, you don't need to go into the audio settings on OBS and set it to default. I disable everything because watch this. We're going to go back into the audio tab, go over here to default and hit disable. Apply that. Now I have one microphone. If I go to the mic properties, I can set that as whatever my mic is coming through. In my case, it's the Amtrak Audio uh, 2 by 2 and that is my interface, so we hit OK. And now if I go to my starting soon screen, oh look, you can't see my microphone. It's just going to be my desktop audio and my starting soon screen. And then I have my countdown, which is going to play the countdown audio because it has its own little audio track. And then I have my intro screen. And then of course I have my overlay. Hello like all thousand of me, hello. My BRV screen does not have my microphone because I only play my desktop audio. And then I have my just camera screen here that you guys are seeing. And um, the cool thing about that is if you disable everything and you just set it per source, per scene, it separates the audio. So you don't have your microphone on top of every single thing. You can kind of separate it and make your production val value a little bit more. Disclosure, before we get any further, Make sure when you go into your playback devices and windows, I'll drag this over here. Make sure whatever your audio is coming through is set to default in windows. Same goes for recording. Make sure you set your microphone and your playback device as defaults in windows or else this will not work. There you have it guys. Thank you guys so much for coming out to the video today. I hope this helps a lot of people. I hope this helps you guys in ways that I hadn't been able to find before. Um, I get questions all the time on what I need to do for OBS. Um, what kind of settings you guys need to go through? How do I fine tune my settings? How do I, what, like, what do I need to do with OBS to make my stream look a little bit better? Or my stream's lagging. How do I get rid of that lag? 
well i hope this helps you guys i hope hope you guys enjoyed it and i hope it's I hope you understood what I was talking about. If you have any questions, though, feel free to join True Gaming's Discord or my Discord and uh, ping me and send me a DM and I will walk you guys through it 100%. But guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you did not like this video, give it a thumbs down. I have to reach, I have to reach around my microphone. Give it a thumbs down and leave me a comment in the comment section telling me if you like this video or not. And if you have any questions there, feel free to leave one. Um, be sure to follow True Gaming on all social medias. Join their Discord. Same goes for me. Follow me on all social medias, Twitch, Twitter, whatever. And uh, join my Discord. And I will leave all of those links in the description below. But guys, I got to get out of here. So I'll see you next time. Peace out. Have a good weekend.